Okay, everyone, we are going to go ahead and get started. So first of all, welcome, and thanks for taking some time to learn about Confluence with me today over the next 30 minutes. My name is Will Howard McKinney. I have been at Atlassian for a little over five years now, and I am on a team here at Atlassian called the Product Advocates. Now, we are a team that specializes in helping folks understand how our products and services can best suit the specific needs of your use case, of your team, of your organization. Uh, we know our products inside and out, and we know a lot about how they're used in several different ways by many different types of teams. In other words, our job consists of helping folks determine which Atlassian products are right for them and helping understand how they work together to realize even deeper benefits to the way your team collaborates and delivers work. And we're fortunate to have some of those product advocates on the line today who will be answering your questions throughout the session. So let me get into a few logistics real quick before we get to the main event. Now, next to the webinar console, you should see a Q&A widget. If you have any questions at any time throughout the presentation today, please drop them in there. We will do our best to answer all your questions during the time that we're together today. But if for some reason we can't get to them all, we will be following up with you afterwards uh, to get you those answers. And even if we do get to your question, we're still going to contact you in the coming days with a record of your questions and our answers. Also, feel free to reply to that to get back in touch with us if you need anything further so we can continue to help as you navigate your evaluation. Also, take a look at the resources we have linked for you that are surrounding the interface. Uh, bookmark them real quick, as these are some of the common resources that the product advocates have curated for you as helpful documents to get folks familiar with Confluence. Now, you should also receive a recording of today's session in the next few days. Feel free to revisit it or share it with any of your coworkers or stakeholders who might be interested. Now, occasionally we do hear folks report the slides being a little out of sync or other minor technical imperfections, but these are nearly all resolved by simply leaving and returning to the session through the same link that you used to get here. So it doesn't happen often, but if you experience any irregularities with the interface, please just leave and come back and that should resolve it. So I just wanted to mention that just in case. And lastly, a quick reminder that there's no dial-in number. The broadcast is streaming through your browser, so make sure your computer speakers or your headphones are turned up so you can hear the content today. And having said all that, let's dive in. Here is a look at what we're going to be covering in the session today. We just got through the welcome and the overview of today's session, and next we're going to jump into a fresh instance of Confluence as an admin. We'll explore how to get started, to get set up, and learn a lot about what Confluence can do for your teams to enable everyone to collaborate and plan effectively. We'll learn about using templates to help organize your content, uh, learn about some helpful macros to get you started, and some other fun features to personalize and really enrich your content. Next, we'll take a look at the various editions of Confluence and the differences and the benefits of each so you can make the best decision for your team's needs. Then we'll learn about how Confluence integrates with other Atlassian products, specifically with Jira software and with Jira service management, and see some powerful ways to streamline work when you connect multiple Atlassian products together. Lastly, we'll jump into a more fleshed out Confluence instance to take a look at what yours might look like after it's been around for some time and explore some of the benefits of Confluence that might not be so obvious in a brand new instance. And with any time remaining, we'll try and tackle a few questions, but please don't hesitate to use the Q&A widget during the session and we'll do our best to answer all of those. So here we are in a new instance of Confluence. Now I built this prior to the session, so it's not brand brand new, but it should look very similar to a fresh instance. Now, before we get too deep into things, um, on our team at Atlassian, the product advocates, we get this question a lot as folks start exploring Confluence. Uh, what is it? <laughs> and uh, it's an understandable question because Confluence is honestly so many things. It's a wiki. It's a place to house meeting notes, um, document team decisions. It's a project planning space, a knowledge base. Uh, but the thing that draws all of this together and what makes Confluence an incredibly powerful tool for your organization and the simplest way to understand Confluence is that it is a team collaboration workspace. It is a shared workspace where multiple users can contribute, comment, ask questions, and create work together. And that is what I'd love for everyone to take away from the session today. Confluence is a platform where your teams can work together, communicate together, and create amazing content and projects together. So let's get started exploring all of this by looking around in our instance here. We've got a blank slate for us to create something special for our teams where we can document, plan, and do all sorts of incredible things. But first, when you try Confluence, one of the most powerful ways to get the most out of it is to invite other users. Now to do that, we just need to go up here to people, then invite a teammate. 
Now you can enter their emails. Um, you can enter multiple emails here and everyone will receive an invite to come join you in Confluence. Now there are ways to invite users in bulk. You can see a few of those options here, but this is how you can get others to join you and really understand the power of working together in this shared workspace. Now, as you explore your free trial of Confluence, I strongly encourage you to add another user or two. A huge part of Confluence's value is how easy it is to work and collaborate with others in this workspace. So you're really missing out if you don't explore those aspects of it. But next, let's take a look at the structure of Confluence and how to organize it. So first of all, let's talk about the personal space. Every user in Confluence can click their profile right up here and add a personal space. Now, this personal space is associated with each specific user and gives everyone a place to create personal content. Uh, this is a great place to keep your personal notes, project ideas, uh, write blogs about your work and accomplishments, or create a place for people to get to know a little bit more about you. So let's take a look at my personal space and check this out. So right away, we land on this overview of our new space, which gives us a nice bird's eye view of what we can use this space for. So right below overview, we can see our blog, which is a great way to blast out things like team accomplishments, announcements, and, and more. Um, next, we have settings for our space, which gives us several options to further customize it to our specific needs. Now, uh, further down, we have shortcuts. Now, shortcuts are a great way to keep links and resources handy that you need to find quickly or refer to often. You can link to external links here, like general web URLs, or you can link, of course, to other Confluence spaces and pages here as well. Uh, project pages that you're working on, for example. Now, once you're done working on said project, it's quick and easy to remove these as well to keep them relevant. So spaces are a fundamental aspect of how Confluence is organized. A space, like this personal space, is essentially a home for related content. In our personal space, that related content is simply all the content that we want to create or to shortcut for ourselves. Things like ideas, um, personal introductions, really anything at all. But if we click up here on spaces, we can create a new space. And one common practice is to create a space for a team, to give an overview of what we do, introduce our team members, and document our policies and procedures, and store all of our team info like meeting notes and project plans. So let's create a space for my team, the product advocates, and there is a template just for this purpose here that we can build out with the specific information about our team that we want to include. So we have a guide up here at the top with helpful suggestions on how to use this space template and some pre-built sections where we can list our team members, add an overview of our team mission and responsibilities, uh, and these other options as well to help you get started. Now to edit this, we would go into edit mode by clicking up here, but we're gonna talk about editing a little bit later, so let's just stick to the structure of Confluence by looking at pages. Now below spaces, we have pages right here, and pages can then also contain child pages. And this is just a way to continue to organize relevant content. For example, we can make a page for meeting notes and then have a child page for each month where the meeting notes from that month all live. And now everyone on the team, and, and this is important, everyone who will ever be on our team will have access to this resource, this single source of truth, where we have documented all of the meetings and the topics that we've discussed ever. And it's all right here in an easy to navigate page tree that lives in a place that should be easy for anyone to find it who may need it. Now I say, you know, all your notes ever, but of course you, you are welcome to delete and archive content. We're gonna look at archiving a little bit later. Um, I just wanted to emphasize that it's very beneficial to have this kind of long running historical record of your team's activities over time. Another common addition to a team space are project plans. So let's get one of those in here. Now to create a new page, we can just click on this plus sign. Uh, now we could potentially make a parent page and call it projects and then nest our project poster under that, depending on how our team wants to structure this content. But there is a template here for project poster. Uh, yeah, here it is. And we can see a preview of the template right here so we can feel confident that this is what we need. Now we only have 30 minutes, so I won't go into as much detail with this page configuration, but I do want to take this opportunity to mention a teammate of mine here as the owner. So we'll publish this, and I'll uh, add a comment once it's published asking Walt to fill this out by the end of the week. And as Walt gets this populated, I can come back here and check his progress. I can add comments. 
We can ask each other questions and make edits uh, based off our decision. Again, the power of Confluence as a collaboration space is front and center here. Anyone who needs to be involved in this project plan can work together directly from here. So now we've built ourselves a personal space, a team space, and we put some pages in our team space to hopefully give you a solid idea of what Confluence can be used for and how it's structured to help organize your content. Now let's create another page quickly so we can take a look at the wealth of options available in the template library. We use the template library to make our team space and our project poster, but just look at all the options available to you to help create your content. Things like a 90 day plan for new hires, a career development plan where folks can document and track progress towards career goals, a DACI template to help document your decision making, and loads, loads more. And you can also start with a blank page if you'd like a free form page that doesn't have any pre-built options. You can also create new templates as well if you have a page structure you'd like to use repeatedly that isn't already listed in the template library. So just to show that quickly, uh, we visit our space settings and click templates here under look and feel. And we have this option here to create a new template. So let's get ourselves a blank page next where we can explore the Confluence editor a bit. The editor is what you'll use to format your content and there's lots of options here that you should get familiar with during your trial. So first we have the text options here, which are mainly just different text sizes that you can use for you know, headers, um, subheaders, things like that. Now next to that, you have these other text options that should be pretty familiar to most of us, bold, italic, underline. Then there's text alignment, uh, text color, and of course bullet and numbered list. Again, all very familiar options. Now moving down the editor, we have uh, this task option. We can embed a link using this icon, and we can add files and images to our page. We can at mention a user. Um, and then here is an emoji library. And we can also add a spreadsheet style table to our page as well. Now again, only 30 minutes and a lot to cover, but if we add a table, we can just quickly see some of the options here to add new rows, um, add new columns. And if we click on a cell or a group of cells, we have some additional options for those as well, like color, uh, we can merge cells, we can clear them. Now next we have some layout options, and this is where you can get pretty creative with your page. And if we click here, it gives us a two column layout, which we can then change to be a triple column, right sidebar, left sidebar, or a main middle column with two sidebars. Now let's go ahead and clear this quickly and throw a page together that will detail the outcomes of an A-B test for an email campaign. So I've just made a two column layout and I'm gonna label these variant A and variant B. And then I'm gonna add a, another layout and set that to three columns and just call this um, you know, outcome A and then outcome B. And we'll dedicate the center column to be the winner. And then uh, we'll just add some dummy data under here. We're gonna use open rate and uh, click through rate for both of these. So let me just throw this in here real quick. Put that same uh, information on, on the other side. And then, sorry, just bear with me here while I um, just get some, some, some made up data here uh, in these columns so that we can determine a winner. And we're just gonna say that variant B um, is the one that performed the best. So we'll go ahead and put um, outcome B here in the winner column. Now also within these layouts, you can use all of these other formatting options in the editor. So things like text align, we can make this center. Um, let's make this right align just to make it look a little neater and um, have the data all be together. And then uh, we can also do some fun things like we can make this, um, you know, a bigger header. And let's make this a nice green since, uh, since it's the winner and we're celebrating. Now, if we go ahead and, um, well, let's add a, a title first. You can't publish without adding a title. So if we publish this, we can see how this will look. And, you know, just look at what we've been able to make just within like a minute or two, right? And if we ever need to, say, you know, a year or two later, the team has changed, maybe a similar idea is proposed. We have this outcome, searchable, discoverable, living here in our team space. Um, again, forever, it lives here forever to refer back to um, if we want to build off this idea. All right, let's get back into edit mode by clicking on this pencil icon. And you'll see actually as well that all of these icons also have keyboard shortcuts. So I can just hit the E key on my keyboard to get into edit mode as well. Um, but the last item in the editor to go over is the macro list. Macros are things that you can add to your pages to give even more detail. Um, and there are a lot of them, but I would like to highlight just a few. 
So we have an info panel, which can add some helpful context to the top of the page. So uh, we can just add a brief description of what this page is to give folks a kind of summary. We have an expand macro where you can put content that can be collapsed or expanded when viewing the page. Um, and if we click into see all, we can explore some other options um, like the date macro. And look, several of these macros have keyboard shortcuts as well. So if we open up the um, macro menu by hitting the forward slash on our keyboard, we can then um, use a, a, another slash to make a double forward slash to automatically insert a date selector. Now, similar to the info panel, there are other panels for things like notes. Uh, so we can just add that real quick to see what it looks like. There's also one for warning and uh, for errors. The, there are also these status lozenges that you can use to add callouts for things like the status of outstanding items. Or in this case, we can add a quick uh, winner and loser uh, lozenge for these metrics for our analysis. One more really useful macro is the task uh, or the action item macro. And when we use this and then at mention a user next to it, Confluence recognizes this as an action item for that person. Um, think of this as a lighter version of assigning someone an issue in JIRA. It's very helpful when building out a project plan, or in this case, asking Walt to use these results in our next email blast. And finally, to make our page really pop and, and draw in readers, let's add a header image. So this is just a stock image, but you can certainly add your own as well. Now, we were barely able to scratch the surface of how to format your pages in the time that we have together. So please, again, bookmark those links surrounding the webinar console to access more about all of this. But our research shows that pages with a header image have approximately 12x the engagement of pages without one. And pages with emojis in the page title have about 10x engagement. So using these formatting features like emojis, different colored text, creative layouts, header images, they can really impact your page's reach. All right, so that should give us a solid understanding of how to get in Confluence, add users, and start creating compelling pages and plan projects collaboratively and a lot more. Um, so let's take a moment to understand the various versions of Confluence and the differences between them. So this is right off of our website detailing the various Confluence plans, so you can access this information at any time. And first of all, I will say that every version of Confluence has a free trial to explore and to get started. But we do have a free version that comes um, with some paired back features, um, which is free indefinitely for up to 10 users. But it is still a powerful tool for small teams to have a shared workspace and to explore the benefits of Confluence beyond the duration of your free trial. Now the paid version, the standard paid version of Confluence offers significantly more storage than the free version. Um, free offers you two gigs of file storage, while the standard tier offers 250 gigabytes of storage. Now standard plans also unlock access to Atlassian support, while free versions are limited to support from our community site. And standard also unlocks permissions for spaces and pages, allowing you to assign, revoke, and modify a space and page access to individual users, groups, or even anonymous users. And the free plan does not offer any of those permission features. Standard plans also allow you to choose where your data is housed or data residency to comply with any regulations in place about where your data needs to live. And standard also offers page insights, letting you see things like page views, user views, uh, and data on comments. Now for organizations looking to scale with more advanced content controls, we also offer a premium plan like we do with most of our other products like Jira Software, Jira Service Management, and Bitbucket. Now for Confluence, the premium version offers everything standard has, as well as some other helpful features like 24-7 support and a financially backed uptime of 99.9%. It also has IP allow listing, uh, unlimited storage up from the 250 gigabytes from standard, and analytics for pages, for spaces, and for your entire site, which is a step up from the page insights that comes uh, with standard. And with Confluence Premium, you also get team calendars. Team Calendars was an add-on that has been built directly into Confluence Premium, which can embed linked calendars onto a Confluence page to facilitate communication and availability. We have more information about Team Calendars in the Resources window in the UI, but briefly, Team Calendars is a way to embed a calendar into a Confluence page that draws info in from other calendars linked to it, like Google Calendar, Outlook, and others. And it acts as a single place to see upcoming team events, team member availability, and it really helps you understand capacity planning to make better resourcing decisions.
So it gives your team one place to visit to always stay up to date with your backlog, help stakeholders understand what's coming and when. Uh, it's a great standout feature of Confluence Premium that you can try for free if you start a trial for a Confluence Premium. And you can learn more about it from the resource link in the webinar UI. Now again, we aren't able to dig into all the benefits of Premium, but um, there is this page right here is a link in the resources, and I encourage everyone to bookmark all of those so you can explore all of these plans and the other resources more thoroughly. Now from what we've seen so far, hopefully it's clear that Confluence is a very powerful collaboration space that enables your teams to work asynchronously from a single source of truth to create spaces, document policies, write and share blogs, plan projects, everything we've gone over so far. But to really up-level your teamwork, Atlassian builds really an entire suite of products that are designed to work together and integrate in incredibly powerful ways. And when you run on the Atlassian platform, it really is almost an ecosystem for work where your tools and your teams are able to work, communicate and deliver in a seamless way. So for Confluence, some of the key integrations are with Jira software and Jira service management. In Jira software, for example, you can quickly link a Confluence page to a Jira project. And this gives any Jira user quick and easy access to the project plan to get updates, make changes, and communicate with the team on that single source of truth. Now your project journey might look something like this. Um, we'll create a project plan in Confluence to determine your team outcomes, timeline. Um, to demonstrate, we can just use the poster that we made earlier. Then we would create a project in Jira. So let me navigate over to Jira real quick. And uh, that is going to house all of the work items for that project and you know assign owners for those work items. You can then link your Confluence pl uh, project plan directly into your Jira project right here. We'll just select um, the, the space that we were in, the product advocate space, and then all of these pages that we had in that page tree, they show up right here for anyone in this Jira project to access. And not only that, you can even edit a Confluence page right here from Jira without having to navigate away. We can click this pencil icon to make edits to this page and publish those edits right from here. Now you'll also see some of our Confluence templates off to the right. We can create brand new pages directly from Jira as well. One more really useful integration between these two is you can create Jira issues directly from Confluence. And once a work item is ready for action, you can highlight it in Confluence and click on create a Jira issue and create it directly into the right project where it will appear in that project's backlog. Now the corresponding Jira issue will automatically appear in Confluence so you can click directly into it. And if we look at our backlog, we can see that it's waiting right here for us. So when we're ready, we can add it to a sprint. Project planning and project delivery both in a single platform to help simultaneously speed up and simplify your work. Another powerful integration example uh, between Jira Software and Confluence is the Advanced Roadmaps macro. In Confluence, the Advanced Roadmaps macro can be used to embed a dynamically updated roadmap in a Confluence page. Now, Advanced Roadmaps is a powerful feature for Jira Software Premium that enables you to create organization-wide plans across multiple Jira projects, and having access to that information right here in Confluence helps keep the information you need front and center. And it's also interactive. You can scroll through the timeline, you can jump directly into the roadmap from Confluence, or go directly into an issue from Confluence as well if you need to make any updates. And for Jira Service Management, you can designate a Confluence space to serve as a knowledge base for folks that are seeking assistance from your IT teams or your other support teams. Now your teams can identify common requests or any type of self-service request and create pages that walk users through self-help steps to deter incoming requests and allow your team to focus more heavily on issues that require their expertise. So here in a Jira work management project, if we go into project settings and then knowledge base, we can see that we already have a linked Confluence space, but we could unlink it and add a new space or designate an existing space that already contains articles that we built. Now to populate this space with self-help articles, let's go back to the project and then click knowledge base. And we click the Create button here and select either the How To template or the Troubleshooting Article template. Um, fill it out with step-by-step -step instructions that your users can understand. And these articles will now actually show as suggested resources when they are on the portal requesting help from your IT team. So it really just helps your team mitigate those incoming support requests to free up their time and let them focus on things that require a bit more brain power. 
So these really are just a handful of examples of the benefits of running your organization on the Atlassian platform. When you run your teams on a platform that is purpose-built to integrate all the levels of your work, the benefits really become pretty hard to live without. Uh, a full 76% of our Jira software customers report shipping projects faster after integrating and adding Confluence to their instance. So we've seen how to set up and get started in Confluence. We've learned about the various plans that will suit your team's needs. And we've learned how integrating Confluence with other Atlassian products can really improve your project delivery and your team communication. Now for the last topic in our session today, let's take a look at an instance that we run internally here at Atlassian to show what an instance looks like that's been around for a little while. So here we are. Now this, again, reminder, this is an internal space. Um, so you might see uh, a couple funky things in here. But if we click into one of these spaces here, we can take a look at how you know this team has documented their meeting notes. Now from this page, they have linked to other pages that contain the minutes of these past meetings. Managers or team members who need to look up past meeting topics can easily navigate all of those right here from this page. And if we click over into this space, here is an example of a team space that's been built out with things like team members and a general roadmap to really just kind of give people a landing page to understand what this team is about, who it consists of, and what they're working on. And then if we navigate into yet another space, here we can see an example of page views in analytics to see how this page's engagement has trended over time. Now, this is a test space used for internal purposes, so our views aren't very high, but this should at least show you how to access and, and look at this information. And once a page or a space is no longer relevant, it's common to archive them. Now, archiving removes the content from your page tree, but it still lives here in the instance where you can still see and access the content by going down to this archived section um, on the sidebar. Oh, you can also restore the content back to the page tree as well. Uh, you can delete it permanently, or you can add some notes for context that will appear right here in this column. So I really just wanted to dip in here for a minute to show off some of these features from a site that has a bit more historical data and show how Confluence can really become that single source of truth or the hub for team collaboration across your entire organization. So that is going to bring us to the end of our topics for today's session, everyone. We are running right up to the end of our 30 minutes together, but our product advocates will be working to answer any remaining questions submitted through the Q&A widget. And please keep an eye out in the coming days for an email containing a record of your questions and our answers, as well as an email with a recording of today's session that you can revisit or share with any interested stakeholders. Thanks again for joining to learn more about how Confluence can help your teams deliver work more effectively. Uh, one last call to spin up your trial and bookmark those links in the webinar interface. I think you'll find them very helpful and I hope everyone enjoys the rest of their day. Thanks again.